So today I'm going to talk about the La Prime Unite France group, uh, which has been existed for a year, how we took inspiration from the Nordic experience while, while facing our own set of challenges. So this group has existed since January 2017. It was founded by Alexia uh, with uh, inspiration from the Nordic Lab and permission from their original founder, Karin Edman. The objective of this group was to be a discussion group for female, and also anyone from the non-binary and the gender specter to focus on LARP, sexist issues, safety issues, to be a resource center also on these issues and to prevent sexism and harassment. As of this talk, we have 266 members and the team comprises five administrators, which will be the we I'll be referring to from now on. Um, but backtracking a bit, uh, this group didn't appear in a vacuum, it appeared in a context where there were, uh, in the French community, in the French-speaking community, a lot of talks about emotional safety. And right before we, um, we created the group, uh, my friend Marianne and I also published this uh, Matter of Security Practical Manual, which was a very, very basic thing, but we managed to get our collective to publish and promote it, uh, then it was circulated a lot. And there were all these questions about emotional safety that were very late in coming to the French speaking scene uh, for a lot of cultural reasons. I'm not going to be get into detail, but coming from the origin of player versus player culture, uh, secrecy more than transparency, uh, full editorial control by lab designers, and so on. And this discussion was very important because uh, Beyond emotional safety, uh, our real purpose with that was to discuss and create a um, culture of consent. Consent in-game, consent off-game, and the way these issues were overlapping and the lack of culture of consent was rife for abuse situation. So, in this context, there was really a push and there was a lot of demand to have this kind of discussion and especially for female uh, and women participants to have a space to discuss the thing. And in this context uh, was uh, the Lab Human Unite France created. Um, the objectives of the group when we created it uh, was first to have a safe space of expression, which is one, it's a group that works with non-mixity. Uh, to work with uh, support, advice, uh, ranting about sexism, uh, and also testimonies, which I'll get back to, uh, to have a space that would be a show of benevolence and goodwill towards people, being able to listen to each other, share experiences, owning up to one's experiences without feeling judged, uh, and last and important point, confidentiality, a place where you can share your experiences without having people uh, gossiping about it. Um, these discussions for us were very important, and then very important aspects was also to try to call out on predators and missing stairs in the community, which is a huge discussion that has been uh, crossing over several countries, and we felt also that we needed to have this discussion, and this point is going to become very important afterwards. Uh, and to that end, we also knew that we would have a huge moderation work to do, and, uh, and we also were very much in agreement about what we would do. Uh, first, we would be monitoring new members, meaning that we have refused uh, access to the group to people, especially those who had clear anti-feminist positions. We say, no, this group is not going to be for you, considering the type of work that we're going to do here and the type of discussions we're going to have. Um, each member is also supposed to sign a chart where we sum up these principles so that when we get to sanctions, people uh, precisely know what they've been signed up for. And then there's the thread moderation, which was the biggest part of the work, especially in the first few weeks, including uh, minimizing testimonies, victim blaming, gaslighting, not all men are predators, um, uh, defense of, per of per perpetrators. Uh, this was a particularly vicarious example because, of course, at some point we were calling on, on people's friends, associations, boyfriends even, and sometimes this elicited very strong emotional reactions. And, uh, <coughs> and we allowed ourselves to have sanctions, three warnings uh, get you a ban, and from the moderation point of view, we really pounded on this, especially in the first few weeks, because there was also this very vicarious idea that freedom of expression is the freedom to say whatever you want, uh, which is not true, <laughs> not by the French law, it's certainly not with what we were trying to do here. Um, so we had to repeatedly say, no, this is not a fully free expression, this is not a debate space, this is a space for testimony, for people to share, respect other 
people's testimony, respect other people's experience. But it was very hard to get people to understand this uh, at first. And uh, we had some uh, members leaving after the first warning, and some even comparing the moderation work to hazing which is unfortunate, uh, but again, this was an absolute necessity and we have uh, stood by our principle in this and not regretting uh, being strong on this. And, uh, and after the first six months, uh, we had a functioning group and generally things were going well, but uh, one of our main focus, again, which was calling out missing stairs, calling out predators, uh, between ourselves, we thought that we would need at least a year to get the level of trust to start discussing about these very grave issues, these very traumatic issues. But then, Me Too happened. Um, so Me Too um, is uh, this hashtag that got a very huge traction this year in October uh, 2000, uh, 2017 uh, in the wake of the Weinstein scandal. Um, and of course, it impacted uh, our group in a very, very unexpected manner. And it was definitely a turning point because before that, we had had a couple of testimonies, but from members who had already been uh, public about their abuser at great personal cost, I must say. And, uh, and suddenly we had on the first day uh, at least a dozen testimonies and uh, for a full week of the Me Too movement, it started day after day after day, um, which was uh, very heavy, very emotional in terms of moderation, in terms of impact on of our small community. Um, I'm very happy to say that we had very little moderation work to do uh, with one, uh, again, not all men exception. But for mo the most part, the reaction were of support, were of sorority, in spite of the very heavy emotional content, traumatic content, they were really uh, hard, difficult stories. Uh, and and at some point I was really wondering, at least personally, uh, can we really handle this? Uh, and what kind of responsibility are we going to have? Uh, but yeah, uh, this was a pressing out moment. And this led us to what was one of the strongest, but also maybe more controversial move that we did. We did a petition. Uh, by petition, again, it was the administrative uh, group. Uh, and this is calling out on the LARP Federation and the Association Federation to enforce more safety in LARPs uh, because we wanted to call out uh, people. So we had more, of a th more than a thousand uh, people signing up, so which was useful to show that this concern extended be beyond the scope of our little group. Uh, but it was also controversial because, uh, because there was a notion that uh, was the group becoming political and was the administration team uh, taking the, uh, speaking for the, rest, uh, for the rest of the group, um, which were very valid questions. And we uh, decided afterward that uh, the group would stay mostly a uh, group for discussion and a support group, uh, but this was uh, very exceptional due to the very exceptional circumstances we were, were facing. But the, the advantage of the petition that it really started discussion on this, several associations made a public commitment to, to preventing harassment. Uh, it, uh, it really stirred things within the community. It also elicited a not so uh, gracious reaction from conservatives, which I won't, which I won't dwell upon. But let's just say that this discussion is going on and it has been very, again, emotional for a lot of people. But uh, personally, my take is that it really, again, fostered support and sorority within the community, which is, uh, I believe, the most important uh, thing in this matter. And investigation into sexism in the lab community is being continued by some of our academics. So my conclusion here, uh, LARP Women Unite France for its first year of existence has been quite a rough ride at times, uh, but I do believe that uh, the balance of it is extremely positive in that, that it has really contributed into bringing uh, women um, of the community together and trying to make a push to make LARPs safer and also more inclusive. Um, and, uh, and the negatives we still had regarding the political stance of the lab and people feeling excluded by the moderation work are valid, but uh, still I do believe uh, don't hinder the positive work we've done on this and that we really hope to continue in the future. Thanks for listening.